Hi, so this is the second um, unit here from Toshiba. This is the uh, model SY330 and you know, it's uh, the preamplifier of the Toshiba Rack, uh, you know, hi-fi system that I actually have here for repair and uh, for complete restoration and recapping. So, um, this is the preamplifier, as I said, and um, you know, it's a very good looking um, unit. Look at that, as uh, I think it's um, uh, two units uh, rack mount. Uh, is not really the size of a rack mounted uh, unit size here. It's a little bit smaller. Um, I, d I don't know why. So it's uh, one unit and just to compare, look at that, there is not the right size. So it seems like it's a 19 inches standard rack mount um, uh, kind of thing, but it is not. So be aware of that if, uh, if you are interested in this um, Toshiba, um, uh, you know, hi-fi system. One thing that I don't particularly like is that uh, this um, those units here have uh, um, the base and treble um, knobs, the potentiometers are not dented. So if you don't, if you want your base and treble to be flat, you have to stay here and twiggle it because it, there is no dent here to actually um you know you have to to twiggle it to to find the zero and it's not it's not real great i find i find those kind of uh potentiometers without the little you know step here uh on you know cheap cheaper products and that's not good i mean uh, it don't, doesn't feel right and one uh, I mean, it is not the end of the world, but, um, you know, it's kind of annoying. But uh, the most annoying thing is not having that little dented knob on your balance control. I mean, this is completely free. I mean, I can turn it and I, I can feel the little dent here on the center. On the back, you have the usual stuff, you know, the ground here, the phono, the tuner, the auxiliary input, tape 1 and tape 2, rack and play. Uh, uh, the only thing that I don't particularly like is the output, which is, uh, you know, fixed. As you can see, you have to use, use there uh, to, you know, RCA um, jack here. Um, I, you know, much prefer to have a you know, kind of connection like this. Uh, I don't know why they decide to do to do it like that. Um, and has no DIN uh, connector for the uh, tape. You know, the usual uh, five pin uh, DIN connector like uh, like this one. You know, you stick it right there, stick it to the uh, uh, tape uh, tape deck, and you only have one cable for the rec and the play. All right, so let's take a peek inside. I don't expect much uh, from a, you know, from a uh, preamplifier. There's nothing really else here, a part of, you know, a couple of uh, um, operational amplifiers and transistors. Uh, and by the way, it's super lightweight. This thing is less than a kilo or so. But anyways, oh, all right. This comes off, and wow, there's nothing inside. Where is the transformer? Oh man, the, the transformer. This is the transformer. Jeez, that's tiny. It's mounted on board. That's uh, quite, quite interesting. Okay, so as you can see, there's nothing really exciting. This is the primer side, and uh, you know, some filtering stuff. The um, operational amplifier, they are using RC4558P Classic dual uh, operational amplifier. And they're two, uh, two units. Love those switches. All right, so here's a better look. This is the, uh, the actual balancing knob. And uh, I, sh I could actually go and change it, but inside obviously it's all very clean because there is no grill. There's no grill on the top and on the bottom. It's all enclosed inside, so nothing can enter, nothing can escape. 
and uh, it's a great thing for dust, uh, keeping out dust. And yes, the transformer here, the main transformer is just that. And uh, you know, it's, you don't really need anything else because it's uh, it's just gonna be some operational amplifier and some transistors inside, and you know, there's nothing really else to power up. So you don't really need a high power kind of you know transformer inside. This is gonna be more than enough. And yes, I have the schematic, and as usual, it's very well written. Uh, as you can see, there is a block diagram right here, and um, you can actually see the EQ amplifier. As I as I actually said, this is the uh, uh, EQ unit with the uh, little preamplifier here, with a little um, operational amplifier here. It's just for the phono. Um, you have the function switch right here. It goes to the um, microphone amplifier. Why? Oh no, this is the microphone amplifier, phono again, you know, this is stereo obviously, so it's a pair. Uh, you have tape monitor, so the, all the switching stuff. And um, here the rec and play, uh, obviously for the phono, why they have the uh, preamplifier for the phono here, because, you know, the phono input is just very low, it's gonna be a very low signal, so... Uh, it's much lower than a auxiliary or the tape uh, input because you know tape and uh, auxiliary uh, do uh, have the uh, a preamplifier already, so the signal is gonna be much higher level than the phono input, which is just gonna be the uh, little tip on your uh, vinyl record that um, is gonna actually have a very very small signal on it, so you have to preamplify it and then uh, pass it through the uh, tone amplifier here. So here's the uh, Mo switch, this is the loudness, um, which is right there. And you um, have the balancing control, you have uh, this is gonna be the, uh, the volume, so those two um, um, potentiometers here. In fact, VR, main VR, Yes, okay, that's uh, that's it. Where you, well, you have the uh, muting unit right here and the tone amplifier, which is uh, which consists of this uh, other uh, the same actual <laughs> um, operational amplifier here, the ICO2. Perfectly good, and here is the schematic diagram. Alright, so let's change those capacitors, shall we? So <laughs> now that um, the um, the actual preamplifier is restored to the original condition and uh, recapped everything, it's fully working, already tested. Let's uh, also see the uh, the receiver, the stereo tuner model ST330, and that's the only model uh, model number that makes some sense. Stereo tuner ST. Why the heck the other? Is S Y S C? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But anyways, this is a beautiful uh, Toshiba unit, and as you can see, it's actually very nice looking. Look at that. That is beautiful. Lever switch for the power on, which I love. Uh, FM mono, AM, FM, obviously everything. What else has two meters for signal and tuning, which is kind of nice. Um, you only find those in, uh, you know, higher-end models, 
but um, you know this is this was not cheap uh, by the way um, back in the days you know it, it was not really cheap uh, but you know it was not uh, super high end either so you know it's, it's right on the middle I guess um, the um, this is the tuner obviously it's beautiful and look at the knob oh, look at the inertia of this thing oh that's that feels actually very nice one of the best I can oh man look at the inertia oh this thing here is fully working um, but has some problems has uh, just some lights the um, actual um, meter lights and also the, the little uh, the indicator here that's not uh, they are actually out so have to replace those with some nice LEDs Oh, that, that, that's, that's actually pretty good. Look at this huge uh, variable capacitor. This, man, that's very good, very good. And um, oh, the light is right here. You can actually see the little wire here. And they use a little um, metal piece to suspend the wire. That's actually novel. Um, so look at the variable capacitor here. I mean, look at that, that is beautiful. They even have a little, uh, you know, gear here and uh, some springs and stuff. I'm fascinated, look at that. You know, and the gear, it's, um, it's you know, to uh, when you reach the end, as you can see, the gear doesn't move anymore here, but uh, it's spring loaded, so you won't actually break anything. That's very good attention to details, I mean. Nowadays, as I said, something like this is still all fitted inside a, you know, MP3 player or your phone, really. Look at the, uh, the weight here to actually make the, uh, the feeling of the, uh, of the knob is just so great. And look at the uh, attention to details, obviously the wire, when moving um, counterclockwise, wants to get this direction here. And when you actually spin the wheel, um, Clockwise, it wants to get this side here. So they actually included a little bit, uh, a little shaft here, and um, there is a Senio chip here, which is actually quite interesting. A one two three zero and uh, A three three five zero are two Senio chips. And look at that, that is very interesting because they actually decided that this uh, inductor and those capacitors should actually have their own board. And this is actually interesting, you can actually choose between the 330 model and the 335 model. So I, I'm not really sure what's the difference between the two, but uh, you know, uh, for the uh, perhaps are equal, but um, I don't know, uh, it's actually strange, uh, there's a jump here, it's connected obviously because it's the, uh, this model is the 330, I'm pretty sure that they are actually uh, sharing the same exact board uh, between the two, so, you know, if you have a 335 and, uh, you know, you don't have that uh, particular option, uh, well, you can actually do it.